and it's okay. up to you. Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Stuart. So basically, yeah, can be seen, yes. So basically, we have seen from uh, from Stuart and from Hiref how to, let's say, manage the control uh, uh, of the loop and how to control, let's say, to keep uh, the loop under certain uh, operative range. Uh, let's have a look now on the other side of the loop, the user side. Um, and we will see that in each uh, in each apartment we are proposing a single heat pump, a water water heat pump. And uh, in the next few slides, we are going to show, let's say, the characteristic of this heat pump, uh, some uh, some uh, performance and operative benefits of this uh, of this unit, uh, and then uh, at the end some installation and service and maintenance. Uh, interesting benefit that we believe that especially for this kind of application are quite uh, strategically uh, important so here is the, the the scheme so basically in each apartment there is a heat pump obviously uh, when the heat pump is working is operating in heating it's uh, uh, let's say uh, extracting heat from the loop and when the unit is uh, working in the cooling mode it's uh, reversing heat into the loop uh, so potentially there is, a, uh, especially during the mid season, there is a, uh, the possibility to, to 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 have an energy balance within the loop uh, when when you, some some units are working in cooling and the other in, in heating. Uh, but there are also uh, two more, let's say, interesting area, especially during the summer season, uh, where there is a great benefit in this in this structure. For example. Uh, if in, during the summer season some units are working in cooling uh, and, and other units in the building are working in domestic hot water production, uh, in that moment, uh, this, this uh, two different settings are balancing, uh, giving, uh, let's say, zero contribution into the loop. And the second situation is, uh, again, during the summer, if one unit in a single apartment, one unit is working in cooling, and at the same time, uh, uh, is requesting the domestic hot water production from that unit. Uh, uh, that unit is working uh, with the, with the, with the zero contribution to the to the to the loop in that very moment because uh, producing cooling, uh, you can have uh, domestic hot water, let's say, uh, as a free energy. And we are going to see later how does this this works uh, with uh, also a, a cal calculation example. Um, so this is a unit. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's like a 600 by 600 by two meter high uh, unit, and this uh, it's available in two in two in two size. For example, heating and cooling, uh, six and ten kilowatt of nominal capacity. Obviously, because there is an inverter compressor, there is a range minimum and maximum. I give you here three uh, working points. Okay, the standard as a reference is the 14511. Uh, but I give you here as a working example three different working points uh, in heating um, 30 35 typical for for underfloor heating or 4045 in case of funk oil and uh, on the on the loop side uh, 2017 and one cooling condition that is uh, for example 712 uh, typical funk oil and 2530 on on the loop side in this case we can see that uh, the heating capacity is uh, roughly 7 and 12 kilowatt uh, for both uh, let's say uh, combination roughly uh, with a cop of 6.5 in case of uh, of underfloor heating or 5 uh, in case of fan coil and uh, the cooling is 4.5 and 7.7 uh, cooling capacity with a cop of 5.2 and 5.1 um Obviously, we, we, we appreciate the fact that in the UK, especially in the UK, the, the only heating version is still uh, it's still an option, uh, especially so if you are considering, if you are choosing as a system uh, the, um, the radiators. So, so also the, the only heating uh, version is also available. Um, so this is the unit. Uh, uh, the unit is assess fully accessible only from the front side. So not from uh, not from the side or from the back. So when you open the front panel, 
And you can see uh, the tank, the 160 liter, uh, 65 liter tank. This tank is for system hot water. So it's not domestic hot water. It's a, a 165 liter fully dedicated of technical water, fully and exclusively dedicated to the domestic hot water production. So the domestic hot water is being produced by an external heat exchanger, external to the tank, but inside the units, obviously, uh, so that the domestic hot water is being produced instantaneously uh, when there is the request. This is giving the, the fact that in this case, uh, uh, the tank doesn't need to be brass certified because it, it, it contains only, only technical water. Uh, for this reason, there is no need of legionella cycle. Uh, and this is also giving the, the guarantee that uh, the, the domestic water amount is really uh, reduced at the minimum. And there is no contamination between technical, between technical and domestic hot water. Um, the tank is standing still in any case. And, uh, um, and let's see the next, uh, how it works. This is how it works, the domestic hot water production. So basically, this is a simple uh, operative uh, cycle of the domestic hot water. As you can see, the tank, uh, there is the external heat exchanger. When there is the request of the domestic hot water at the tap, the pump, the variable speed pump is activated, producing instantaneously the domestic hot water. Um, the pump is regulated by uh, the temperature on the outlet of the heat exchanger. So as you can see, all these, uh, the component within this gray area are brass certified. So the pipes, uh, uh, the pressure inlet, the regulator, uh, the blending valve, and of course the heat exchanger, but not the tank because the tank is in containing only technical water. Um, there is also a backup heater uh, as an emergency, so this backup heater is not working during the, 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 the normal function of the unit of the domestic of water production, but only in case of emergency. In any case, the, the, the Legionella cycle can be uh, implemented, can be activated uh, for, for service reason, if there is the request, but, but not for the normal function of the, the life of the unit. So this is the, uh, in the tank, we have typically uh, 55 degrees uh, in order to have uh, uh, 50 degrees uh, at the outlet of the heat exchanger. And then in order to have 48 degrees at the tap uh, as per the UK regulation. The next uh, uh, working function is, this is the heating mode. Uh, and I want to show you how it works because it's quite uh, interesting because as you can see, uh, when there is a space, space heating request that can be on the floor or can be uh, fan coil units or radiators, uh, you see that this is the compressor. So the, the, um, the compressor is sending hot gas through this heat exchanger that is not activated because the pump is not working. So the hot gas is going through the four-way valve to this heat exchanger. So there is a, a dedicated heat exchanger only for the space heating. And after the expansion valve, the gas is evaporating on the loop side. So I'm reversing to the loop some, some cool energy, let's say. If in this situation, there is a request of the domestic hot water, that can be done simultaneously because there is a dedicated heat exchanger for the domestic hot water. So the two can be done in simultaneously independently. If uh, during this, there is uh, uh, the temperature inside the tank is, is, is decreasing. So the thermostat is giving the consensus uh, to the system to be replenished. In that case, uh, uh, the pump, uh, this pump is activated. So in this case, uh, the, the, heat ex the first heat exchanger is extracting the first part of the gas and working as, as a, the superheater. And then the other gas is going again through, sorry, through the uh, four-way valve again, to continue to produce uh, uh, space heating. So in this transitory situation, uh, um, we can have together and simultaneously space heating, domestic hot water production, of course, and domestic hot water tank replenishment. Uh, because in this transitory, uh, the comp compressor, of course, is increasing a little bit the, the speed. And also the system is managing the, the two variable pump accordingly in order to have to, to, 
to share the energy between the two the two heat exchangers. And then, of course, uh, on the source side, I'm reversing some uh, cooling energy. That's the heating and the domestic hot water. Ah, by the way, there is also eventually a, a backup heater also in line on, on, on the uh, on the heating supply. Again, this is not uh, uh, working and normally it's just a, an emergency in, in case of failure. This is the heating mode. The, in the cooling mode, um, in this case, uh, the compressor again uh, is, is sending the gas through this heat exchanger that is not activated. And then uh, uh, the reversing valve is sending the gas on the, on the loop side. So the, the loop heat exchanger is working as a condenser. So, and then after the uh, expansion valve, I'm uh, this is the evaporator. And so I'm producing a space uh, cooling. It can be for, for underfloor uh, cooling or for the, for the fan coil. Uh, again, during the, 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 the cooling space, cooling production, I can have a simultaneously domestic hot water because there is a, an independent and separate heat exchanger. Interestingly, if in this situation I have, again, the consensus from the tank to be replenished, in this case, I, uh, when I activated this pump, uh, uh, this pump is extracting all, all the gas uh, from, 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 from uh, all the heating from the gas. And also excluding this, uh, closing the two-way valve uh, uh, on the loop side, I can really uh, uh, let this heat exchanger became uh, like a total heat recovery exchanger. So basically, in this very moment, I'm recovering all the energy for the for the tank replenishment. Uh, the domestic water requires is still working to produce hot water, and I'm producing a space cooling from this side. So in this very situation. I'm not uh, reversing into the into the loop any energy, so it's like to have uh, uh, while I'm producing space cooling, uh, I can have uh, uh, free energy to replenish my tank. Um, so in this situation, the, the the efficiency of the system is very very high, and uh, I want to show you in the next slide like uh, a simulation of this. Uh, so this is a formula, we, a simple formula we created to, to explain this. We call um, total energy ratio. Let's say if we calculate on this situation uh, the cooling capacity plus the domestic hot water capacity in the tank replenishment divided by the power input, and we call this uh, total energy ratio, we can see this here two examples. Um, for example, uh, 712 uh, on, the, on the cooling side or 2318 in case of, uh, of underfloor cooling. So underfloor cooling or fan coil uh, cooling. And uh, on, the, on the, let's say, domestic water side, 5055. In this situation, we have a cooling capacity, for example, uh, for, you know, on the fan coil of uh, 3.36 uh, um, kilowatt and a CO, uh, sorry, ER of 2.2. The efficiency, of course, of the cooling in, the, in this case is very low because I'm condensing a very high temperature on the other side. Um, the domestic of water um, if, um, capacity in this one is 4.89 and the COP is 3.2. So the total energy ratio in this case is 5.4 for one unit, say 5.3. Or in case of uh, underfloor cooling, it's uh, almost 7. So as you can see, the, uh, the overall efficiency is very high. This, this is not a COP. This formula doesn't exist in any, in any standard, in, in any certification. It's just a, a way uh, to give a, an operative, uh, to explain an operative uh, efficiency of the system. Um, in this case, the overall efficiency is very high, but also uh, we are not reversing into the loop any energy. So it's a double effect of, of benefit, if, if you want, in this in this uh, special operating mode. Um, and the last operating mode is uh, uh, domestic water production only. So if there is no, if there is the, any request of space heating or cooling in that moment, uh, the units can work uh, as, uh, uh, let's say, uh, independent uh, uh, domestic water production can be 
again, only at the top for, for using the, the instantaneous production, also as a tank replenishment. So in this case, uh, uh, the tank heat exchanger is working uh, uh, as a condenser and I am evaporating on, on, on the loop with some cooling energy. Um, obviously, in this situation where uh, there is no space heating or cooling demand, uh, the system can uh, optimize uh, the COP during the, uh, the tank replenishment mode, modulating the, 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 the speed, the, 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 the compressor speed or the pump speed. That's what was the operation. From the from the installation point of view, interestingly, this 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 units can come with a, um, a, an interesting manifold as a, as an accessory, in a way that uh, when when the apartment is uh, is still under construction, I can I can uh, install this manifold and I can connect all the piping, and then only when the apartment is is ready and finished, I can bring on site my heat pump and easily I can I can um, fit. Uh, through, through the door, of course, and, and line up uh, connected piping, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, flush uh, the system and take the, 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 the air out, uh, and the unit is really ready to be uh, operative. So very, very quick and easy to install for a piece of, piece of mind of the construction company, but also of the installer. Uh, and the second benefit is from the service and maintenance point of view. Uh, as you can see, all the refrigerant components of the, of the units are included in this refrigerant box. Uh, the, uh, so it's also a meaning of double installation, but mainly it, it, for a quick, uh, uh, let's say, dismantling. Uh, if you need to, to service uh, the units or to, to, to make some intervention, you can easily unplug uh, the electrical cable on this position. You can uh, un uh, unbolt the six uh, piping that are on the front of the units. Uh, you can easily extract the, the box uh, and take it to the to the service uh, station uh, to make a very quick and easy and easy installation, uh, repairing or service of the unit. Um, also, in case of, for example, if the the the, the owner bought, uh, for example, the only heating version and he wants to, to upgrade with heating and cooling, he can just replace. Uh, the box uh, and not the unit itself. Uh, and finally, I, I want to show you just a couple of interesting uh, accessories of the units. Uh, one is the flow meter that we give uh, as an accessory here inside, uh, um, on, let's say on the loop side, on, on the outlet of the loop side, because this accessory can be very interesting uh, for the commissioning of the units, uh, of course, uh, you know, to check the, the correct flow on the brine and, and loop side. But also during the, the, the operation of the units, uh, because it's important to keep uh, um, uh, to monitoring the, the flow on, on the loop side to avoid any, any issue on the compressor side. Um, and the second one, uh, uh, sorry, this flow meter is also very, very interesting because this the, the measure of the flow on the loop side, on the water flow, together with the, with the delta T temperature on the loop side can give uh, an important information uh, to the, the building manager uh, to, to, to charge uh, the tenant or the owner of the apartment uh, for the consumption of the loop energy. Um, and this is quite uh, interesting possibility. And the second one accessory is the, uh, the two-way uh, valve, on, on, again, on the source side, because uh, it's important to, to for example, to, to shut down, to close the loop flow, for example, in case of... Uh, of uh, uh, domestic water production together in, in, in the, with the cooling mode, or for example, if I want to, if I leave the, the house for, for for holidays for a few days, I, I, I may decide to, to to shut down the units and the flow to avoid uh, you know the, the the loop flow through through the heat exchanger to avoid the consumption of this this energy. Let's say. So that was the I think the last. Uh, yeah, the last uh, of slide of my presentation. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Eduardo.